I mean, it even came with a handle. How cool is that? How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here showing off my GameCube collection, which I can literally hold with one hand. I don't have the most amount of games, but the games I do have are very sentimental to me or just plain fun. Now, I still have my original GameCube that I bought at launch. This is not that one, but I do want to show this off. This is from Power Up Gaming. I mean, because it has like the SD card thingy on the inside, custom HDMI out there. So when I play GameCube now, yeah, it's probably using this. Um, but I still have some of these games too, just because you got to have the physicals as well, right? Every physical has a story. This game is probably my favorite GameCube game of all time. I wanted to start with this one. It's Ribbit King. I first played this game via a demo that was sent to me by Bandai. I used to work with Bandai at the radio station. They would send me stuff to use as giveaways and they had a bunch of these game demo discs. So I grabbed one for myself, of course. And I was like, oh my God, it's, I would have never have thought to look at, even look at a game like this. I'm so glad I did. That's why demos are so important. Haven't looked inside it in a while. All right, so it's missing the manual, but it has both discs. The secondary disc has like extra videos and there's a couple gameplay demos on there as well. And it seemed like it was the game that I kept hyping up that people are like, oh, I think I've heard of that, I think I've heard of that. It's also available on PlayStation 2. But recently it started just going up and up in price. And uh, I love it when they still have the original stickers on the back. Yeah, $9.99, all right, I'm just leaving that on there. Absolutely love Ribbit King. I can't tell you why, it's just super, super fun. I had a fun time just playing it. Um, it was just during a, a good time in my life where you know games like this were just awesome. I'd love it if Bandai would bring this back. Speaking of games that need a reboot, Billy Hatcher from Sega. Now, I don't know if they ever made another Billy Hatcher game on another console. Do they have one for Game Boy Advance? I don't think, I mean, this may be Game Cube exclusive. I didn't even do the research, obviously. All right, let's take a peek inside. Oh, I have the uh, receipt, <laughs> as well as the manual and the disc, and even the uh, even the registration card. Fun. Well, you know, this was such a great time for Sega because there was during the time when they had like a you know, crazy taxi, choo choo rocket, and they were just like, you know what? Let's just be as weird as possible. And this game is actually super fun. When you play it, you're like, yep, this is this is a Sega game that would have come out in that late '90s, early 2000s era. Sega, you want to do another uh, reboot of that one? I wouldn't mind. Or even just port this one to the Switch. I'd buy it. Sentimental favorite, Super Monkey Ball 2. Now, I love the Monkey Ball games. I love all of the Monkey Ball games. But this one, especially for Game Boy, it feels pretty heavy. I'm sure the disc and manual's in here. <gasps> Where's the disc? The disc may be in my other GameCube, my actual physical GameCube. Well, super sentimental to me because this was the game that was gifted to me when I got married. That's right. My friend Timmy um, gifted this to me on our wedding night. Wait, that sounded weird. As a wedding gift... <laughs> <laughs> we received this game as a, hey, you like video games? Here's this game for you. Now, the toaster we got on our wedding, destroyed. The microwave, it blew up. This, that, the other, still got this game, man. Well, wherever it is. I know it's somewhere. But yeah, this is one of those games I'll just never get rid of, you know, for that reason. If you haven't noticed yet, I, did, I know I just changed shirts a little bit ago. I love these new shirts. These are from Into the AM. Big thanks to them. They are the sponsor of this video, and they sent me some shirts to check out. My two rules for 2023 are it's going to be the year of Sega and the year of comfy clothing. I literally, earlier this year, got rid of about 35 to 40 t-shirts that were just too stiff. They didn't feel right. They Maybe they looked cool, but I just literally wasn't going to wear them because they didn't feel good. I'm going for all comfort this year. And we can add comfort and style and cool looking stuff like this. I'm down. I want to get you 10% off too. Use my link in the description below. It's intotheam.com slash rigs. And not only are you saving 10%, but you're getting bundle deals too. You wouldn't just cook one piece of bacon. So why would you buy just one shirt from a website? You're already ordering something anyway. Three graphic tees for only 60 bucks. You don't have to buy just three. You can buy six of them if you'd like. It's the kind of material I'd want to wear underneath a shirt when I'm wearing like a button up or something like that too. So they also do make basic tees. That way you're not wearing like a design like this underneath a shirt where no one would see it. So something like this, same material, super stretchy. I love it. You'll see me wearing these shirts in my future videos as well as at a convention near you. Into the am.com slash rigs. Use that link and save some cash. 10%. Come on now. So we got Def Jam Vendetta. I do not have the other one, but this one's not bad. And for the 12 bucks I paid for it, super worth it. We we're going through a wrestling phase for the time. It has the boxing manual in the back. So it has the disc and manual. Why is the manual backwards? There we go. It uses the Aki engine, so that's why it plays a lot like No Mercy. We were going through a lot of great wrestling games for the time too, but we still wanted games that use that Aki engine, and this one did. So even though it wasn't really based on pro wrestling, it still was a lot like pro wrestling. And that's why I loved it, and the other one's great too. And I have the other one for the PlayStation 2, just not GameCube. Not anymore, anyway. If you have a GameCube, you gotta have this game. Eternal Darkness, come on now. The first time I played this game, the first time anybody played this game, you're like, okay, I get it, all right. It's, it's like, it's a GameCube, Resident Evil-ish kind of thing that you're walking around. But then stuff starts freaking out, like it looks like the TV just turns off, or uh, you go to a room and there's like a 
like so many enemies all at once or they're all giant size and stuff like that. It just, it plays with your head. It's just such a trip. I wouldn't mind an updated version with better controls. I remember the controls on this game were pretty clunky. Great game. If the game wasn't as trippy or as cool or anything, I don't know if I would have gotten much farther in this game saying, ah, it's not even worth it. But everything else made it worth it to want to go through this game. And this was a made by Nintendo game, wasn't it? Well, developed by someone else here. Sword and Knights, is that right? Why you gotta, why you gotta put a logo and I can't even read it? Well, yeah, whatever. Anyway. We need to do one of these, please. Thanks. Yeah, watch this. Woo! Anyway. Luigi's Mansion, what? I mean, come on, it's Luigi's Mansion. Player's Choice Edition, I'm okay with that. It still plays the same. It's a game, admittedly, what it was It was a launch title for the GameCube, wasn't it? And it was funny, because for the longest time, I didn't care. For the longest time, I was like, it doesn't even look that great. It doesn't look fun. Why would I Why would I be interested in that one? I don't even remember what I was playing instead, but I honestly never even looked at the GameCube version. I shouldn't say I looked, didn't look at it. But I didn't play the GameCube version for more than five minutes until around Luigi's Mansion 3 came out. And then I went back, I was like, okay, I, I kind of get it now. I get it now okay so yeah even though i'm from the day where it first came out i'm not as nostalgic that a lot of people are it is a great game and when i sat when i saw player's choice edition at a convention uh, i think it was like last year or the year before i was like ah you know what I'll, I'll go ahead and grab that no manual but star fox adventures and i liked star fox adventures i like this one quite a bit now i understand it wasn't star fox but to me, it played a lot like that newer Zelda style, like the Zelda Ocarina of Time and all that. It played a lot like that. So that's what I liked about it. I didn't care about the whole flying around stuff. It was just a fun game. Now I know it's like the whole animal planet, whatever the dinosaur planet, whatever the thing's called, but still have this one and happy I still have this. Metroid Prime along with Echoes. Both of them fantastic. I'm someone who usually plays a game once or I play a game a thousand times. And I loved both of these games, but I've only played them through once and only once when they first came out. I have very vivid memories of when I first moved out and, and played this game. And it's funny because now this game's available on the Switch, the remaster, it's like playing the game all over again because it's been, what, 20 years since I last played through Metroid Prime. So it's like I get little flashes of images or it's like, oh yeah, I remember doing this, I think, over here somewhere, or you know, just how everything else works. It, it, things started to come back to me a little bit. But for the most part, and you get that you get that feeling sometimes, right? You're like, man, I wish I could go back and play this game all over again for the first time. Well, to me, I am playing this game all over again for the first time on the Switch. Because I played it, I loved it, it's been so long, I'm playing it again. And I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see Prime 2 Echoes uh, coming soon. Maybe even later on this year for the Switch. I, sh I sure hope so. I like the first one more than this one. This one's a lot of fun though. What I've always appreciated about the Legend of Zelda games, this is Twilight Princess here, is for a little bit they're, 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 they're the launch thing. It's like it used to be Mario was the launch and then Zelda was the launch, but they'd have two of them. They'd have this one here, but then of course I played the one on the Wii U or the Wii. No, I played this one on the Wii, sorry. The other one that was on the Switch and the Wii U. Um, so I originally picked this up for the Wii and I loved it on the Wii. But then I was like, why would I use waggle motion controls for the swishy swashies and stuff when I can just play this one and don't have to worry about all that? So the Wii version's great. That's the one I played through. That's the one I beat, but happy to have it on this. And I picked this up a few years ago when I was doing, it was on the retro gaming subreddit of the, the chump change challenge where it's like collect all of your change for a year and at the end of the year, use that change to buy a game that you don't wouldn't normally spend your cash on. And when I did that challenge, I had a bunch of change and I went to my local game store and this is the game I bought and I still have it. I didn't mean to be smug about it. I mean, I, I literally bought it with spare change, so. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay, cool. I'm glad to see both of these on here. Twin Snakes, yeah, Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2. The, probably my favorite version of Metal Gear Solid 1 is the GameCube version. Uh, I want to like Metal Gear Solid 2 but the cutscenes are way too... It was right at that time where I'm like, is this a movie or we're gonna play the game? And when you play the game, you're not even Snake for like a long time. No, Metal Gear Solid 3. Come on now. It's like the best one. But I do love... I have tons of nostalgia for Metal Gear Solid, the first one. And I, th I th still think it's fun today, too. I wouldn't mind a VR patch to play Metal Gear Solid 1 in VR. I know there's a patch, but I want like an official release. Anyway, yeah. Fun, fun, fun. And you can you can kind of see the remnants of the uh, EB Games sticker up there in the corner. I'm sure you saw that. And then finally, I'm sure you know what that is. That is the uh, the Game Boy Player there. The Game Boy Player. Because you have to, have to have the disc to play the actual Game Boy Advance player. Now, this was gifted to me uh, a few years ago, or actually probably more like several years ago now, where I didn't have one of these, and I wanted to get one, wanted to get one, and somebody gifted me this one. It's the Japanese version. Actually, this one's universal, 
but you need the disc and the GameCube is region locked. Very easy to modify it so you can play in Japanese or English. These are easy to find. These not as easy, but the Japanese disc, not so bad. In fact, it might be easier to grab one of these from Japan and then a Japanese GameCube than it is to find the US version of this disc. Probably cheaper too. And I mean, I I love Game Boy Advance, so cool to cool to have this. I mean, it's, a, it's an awesome thing to have. Watch them come back up. Whoop. Oh no! If you're curious about my NES collection or my Super Nintendo collection, I have both of these videos right here as well. Thank you so much for watching. Will I do a Nintendo 64 collection video? I don't even know if I have any 64 games left. I have a couple of them, like Conquer, but that'll be a short video. <laughs> I got rid of most of my games.